Welcome. As the old adage states, the best things in life are free. A statement that, when taken into account, things as simple and pure as love, companionship, sentiment and stories is a statement that I wholeheartedly agree with. However, it's not what we see day to day. Some days you do absolutely nothing and it still somehow costs you 70 quid. Everywhere we look we see days out and must try experiences, most of which come with a hefty price tag. They sell water, soon enough they'll sell air. However, there are still things that we can do for free. Let me show you around the completely free things to do in Brighton. Let's venture deep into the innards of what this glorious place has to offer. For free. So, primarily today we're going to be looking at the Booth Museum of Natural History, Hogue Museum of Creativity, Brighton Nudist Beach, Ooh. Brighton Fishing Museum, the Graffiti Trail, and the Rampion Wind Farm Visitor Centre. We've also got some sprucey bones to start in too. First impressions, it's half past two to start with. Long before teddy bears were invented, people had to resort to catching animals and stuffing them for their sleepy time companionship. We referred to this as taxidermy. There's over half a million of these taxidermies in this here booth museum. Rhinosaurus's foot. Does beg the question, where's the three-legged rhinoceros? Named after Edward Thomas Booth, the Booth Museum was founded ages ago, in 1874. It's located near the popular part of Brighton, known as Seven Dars. Eddie Booth got into taxidermy from his uncle at the age of 10. Obsession grew and he began building on his collection. Little is known about his private life, but his works were well journaled and he was known for being an exceptional marksman. You'd often find him in the corner, polishing his rifle. The Booth Museum was open to the public in 1891. It was a fascinating place and I couldn't recommend it enough. Jokes aside, it's an incredible place where you can easily enjoy a couple of hours. Why the long face? I think it's almost time for me to head home. I can't bear it anymore. Hove Museum started life as a home built in the 1870s. As a home, it's massive and the central heating must have cost an arm and a leg, so during World War II, the house was used to nurse wounded soldiers. In 1927, it opened as a museum, which it remains to be to this day. It turns out that whilst filming this, I missed an entire floor because I'm a dingbat. The exhibitions are forever changing and they host a wide array of workshops for adults and little ones. There's a coffee shop on site to keep the crippling withdrawal headaches and shakes away. I liked it. Was it as good as PlayStation? Debatable. Am I glad I went? Absolutely. My mum used to make pineapple out of parsnips. Interactive. And I get 100% correct answers. It feels very bright. Terrible day for paper shoes. It's pissing it down.
I don't. Bring me a handful of sand. Please go away. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> Brighton wasn't always extortionate rent and decaf oat lattes. For most of its life, it was a poverty-stricken fishing town. There are texts suggesting that the fishing industry was prominent as far back as 1086. As a member of Brighton Sailing Club, launching and recovering boats from this shore dump mecca of a beach is the most mental sailing spot I've ever come across. To think that people have been doing this for a thousand years blows my mind. There is so much to be learned in this tiny building. It may be small, but the information and history contained within its walls is astounding. You'll we'll probably bore the shit out of your kids, but if you're anything like me and a bit of a nerd about the sea, I highly recommend this absolute gem of Onzio. Gear. Throttle. Prop shaft. The Brighton Graffiti Trail. This is a hard one to voice over, as the art is forever changing and being updated. And with regards to locations, what I've shot here is very much only scratching the surface. Brighton is internationally recognised for its street art, and it's more or less everywhere you look. Notice how all these pieces are done on buildings that have given permission. I urge you not to take it upon yourself to become a graffiti artist and spray paint a knob on people's property. Rampion Wind Farm Visitor Center. Honestly, the amount I could say about this place would make for a very long, mind-numbingly dull video. I will say, windmills don't get lonely. They have lots of fans. I was greeted by two people working the desk and spent a solid hour talking to one of the gents, clearly passionate about renewable energy and the wind farm project. The place itself was super enticing, interactive, as cool as heck. The windmills are something I see all day every day and I learn so much about them. The process of them being built is a testament to modern engineering. As cool as the centre was, the staff were remarkable and absolutely made it. Ooh. Mental. I need one of these in my house. I don't know what I'd do with it, but it's very cool. What? The installation of the 116 wind turbines started in March 2017. It was 
power in this place. You haven't got a diesel generator out the back. <laughs> if you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this was a joy to make and I'd love to continue making videos. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and uh, hopefully I can make you smile every now and then. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. So cringy.